Okay. Okay. I'm really tired. And I've done this like great, great thing where <laughs> my chair that sits by the bureau is um the place that I would be sitting to do this vlog. But it's also the place that the clothes go when they come out the tumble dryer because I was like, yes, genius, brilliant. I will not be able to leave my washing on the bed or on the chair for like an unspecified amount of time if I need to use the chair. And that was a great plan. That really has worked. It's very true. I can't leave them there. <laughs> and also, I'm just like, ah, shit, I'm, I'm absolutely tricked into um, folding laundry all the time. So I can't actually sit and vlog, I gotta fold laundry and vlog. <laughs> I'm um, really tired. I'm a bit sped up feeling. Yep. I'm a bit like, um, man, I'm a bit, I'm a bit spacey. I had like, not great dreams about, no, actually some bits were really cool. I'm like, involved riding on giant Pokemon and um, that was fun but like just a lot of it it kind of was just indicative of like how much people that were supposed to care about us when we were young never like didn't act like they did like one person that's was like raised like family to us who just used to shout at us all the time who we have like was just like <sighs> so much shit we were like about ridiculous things like and obviously we came from a domestic violence background so like shouting was extremely triggering and traumatic anyway and it was just like screamed in our face episodes of rage we never knew when it was going to happen, so it was really unpredictable, so it was like, fucking bullshit. Um, so the dream just had this person in it, so I woke up like, ah. Oh. But it's not the worst thing in the world. And I, I really like remembering that, like, we used to shout back. Not that we were, like... Not that that's the best thing in the world, but also it kind of is. Kind of like... I like remembering that we weren't frozen and helpless and that there were people in here that would go into the fire response and be like Oh this girl Oh my god no I just <laughs> No I just did the ADHD But seriously no there is a squirrel and it's beautiful Please don't run I don't know if you can see it but it's on that fence and it's looking at me It climbed up the um fence as I was recording So <laughs> I woke up like um, very spaced out and very like ugh, and in the dream it was like this person was was being like verbally abusive and then like pissed off at us for being a kid basically which was yeah accurate and then they my phone rang and they were on the other side of my phone but like a different version of them and being all loving and supportive and being like, yeah, you can come over whenever you want. And like, this kind of is what, a bit of what it was like. So I was like, and I've woken up spaced and a little bit all over the place. And um, today we go to get our booster shot of like COVID vaccine. <sighs> Which, um, you know, it was okay after the first one, because, like, massive fear of needles and shit. But after the first one, it's, like, it was alright. It was survivable. Nothing bad happened. We didn't die. I find it unlikely to think that we will die this time. I'm much less worried about it this time, because we've already had one. But still, it's, um, it's going out it's going to a place it's seeing people it's having a needle in my arm none of these things are fun so i'm a bit about it but um <sighs> trying to remember to do my breathing 
on the ground. I feel like I'm in my body. That helps a bit. The fucking dream set me on edge, so I'm like, I'm a bit spaced. I'm a bit all over the place. And then whenever I'm a bit all over the place, I like have a tendency to maybe catastrophize. Maybe that's what's happening. And um, my brain will be like, oh shit, look how much healing we work. Like how much endless fucking work we do every day. And it's like, oh, you can still get thrown by this one event and still be all over the place. Like, is it ever going to fix? And it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, obviously it's not like, it's not as... It's like it takes it as meaning for my entire life and be and it's like this is what your life is, this is what your life will always be. And then I'm like more all over the place because I'm like, well I shouldn't be so all over the place. I should be like more able to ground in myself. I should be like I guess what it comes from is I have an expectation of how I would like to show up in this world. And sometimes I can achieve that. And sometimes I have like it's difficult to regulate my emotions all the time because that would be impossible. <laughs> and um, it looks like it's so far from how I would like to be able to behave. Maybe um, actually <sighs> something that could help is acknowledging where it's not so far because like I can see similarities between how I would like to be able to show up and how I'm behaving now. I'm like the frantic sort of darting jumpiness is it's not my goal, it's not my expectation. So because I have an expectation of like the goal is not to feel this way is to feel calm and chill and present no matter what is happening in my environment which is um i'm aware that is not a small ask that's like that's like the long-term goal but i guess because i have this expectation i'm not really meeting myself where i'm at so like instead of being like that's my expectation and my goal and look how far i am from it maybe instead i could be like thinking of where i've come from and everything that makes it likely that I will have PTSD, see PTSD symptoms and anxiety and then look at how far I am from that and like if it's a spectrum with my goal being over there and like it's probably not even that linear but if I see it as a spectrum then I can actually see that I'm, I'm closer towards where I want to be than where I've come from Oh, wow, actually, that really helps a bit. It's like, holy shit, that's actually, like... There's a massive difference if I look at it like that, actually. <sighs> Maybe um, I can understand, like, why I'm responding this way, because lots and lots and lots of medical trauma, and lots and lots and lots of trauma engaging with people, <sighs> and lots of anxiety, and lots of social anxiety. I'm actually considering like how much of that shit I've got. I'm I'm dealing with it really well. And I had a fucked up dream. And it's like because it's not really just the dream, you know. It's like it's fairly recent for us to realize, like to properly realize that how this person treated us and how fucked that was. And then there's like a second person who was raised like family who's fucking worse, way more abusive. So I kind of like, I get a dream like that and I think about all of it at once. And it's like, there's this stark contrast of like, this is what your life was like and what you thought was normal. And you thought these people loved you. And now here you are and you realize that these people like, either really struggled to connect and to be emotionally available and were abusive because of their experiences or were just cunts and were just plain abusive 
um, depending on which person I'm thinking of. So it's like, like, it's not just the dream and the experience, it's still like the shock that that is how different to what I thought it was and that this is <sighs> like growing up I wouldn't have thought these people would be out of contact with me but um <sighs> so I've had a really fucked up morning and I have remembered the entire history of drama at least <laughs> of our I mean, yeah, also then, like, two days ago, three days ago, we had to recite our entire timeline of, well, an overview of our timeline of traumas, uh, which I blanked half of, but... <sighs> wow, actually, um, you know what, I, I convinced myself, I'm, I'm doing a, I'm doing a like a full turn here. I'd have given that to you in degrees, but like dyscalculia, so no. No with the numbers and with the angles. But uh, I'm doing a, a full turn. <laughs> I have reconsidered my standpoint, and I think that I'm even closer on that spectrum to where I would like to be compared to where I've come from. I think I'm doing even fucking better than I had any idea of a few minutes ago. God. A lot of my I wish I could as well. Like, a lot of my oh, I wish I could not think so in depth about the things that have happened to us, I wish I could be more in the moment. It's like, most of my I wish I could is basically like, oh, I wish I didn't have CPTSD. I wish I wasn't traumatised from a young age. It's like, yes, I imagine so. <laughs> These are the symptoms. They are not desirable symptoms. This is, this is very much the complaint. Mm. <laughs> it's a bit understandable, isn't it? Fucking curtain bobble came off. Yeah, fix this shit. <sighs> I'm gonna catch the curtain bubble. <sighs> okay, well, the chair is cleared. I feel like crying in a very productive way. <sighs> I think if that was a coping mechanism this body could use and feel safe using, I would be crying right now. can remember to breathe instead. <sighs> I've been so emotionally disconnected the last couple of days as well. Like, man, it's been a lot. It's been a fucking shit ton of stuff. I really like that I can just uh, respond the way I can actually. I'm, uh, I'm not so far from who I want to be. And I quite like who I am. I go so far as to say I really like who I am actually and how I respond. <sighs> I'm really tired. Very understandably very tired. I'm... I'm feeling less emotionally dissociated because like the last, the last um, couple of days have been just I think me just trying to integrate 
some of our life as reality and some of it as like yeah these are things that happened this this is my life and um I very much felt like a computer doing like blue screen of death I feel like I've been trying to mentally integrate the information maybe and maybe the next few days will be like emotionally processing the fact that that's the case and that this information exists <sighs> Maybe I'm really overwhelmed as well and maybe I don't have any idea how overwhelmed especially if we're used to chaos and we're used to like just going and going and doing stuff <sighs> there's kind of like there's kind of a shit ton of stuff that we're dealing with and then there's also like yeah, I've got this appointment to go get booster vaccinated, which is cool, and I'm glad. I'm also just like, that's a bit of a, a bit of an exhausting process for somebody with medical trauma and with like fear of needles and with anxiety of leaving the house and shit like that. <sighs> Okay. See why I'm all over the place. See why I'm overwhelmed. It's okay to be overwhelmed. And if I repeatedly do it, stuff like this, if I am emotionally engaged and available for myself, then I'll get used to the sensations that doing this sort of stuff causes and then it'll get easier as I go and eventually I will just be whelmed no over maybe maybe one day I'll even be underwhelmed Ooh. find it like I don't know if I want to be underwhelmed going outside I think I want to be whelmed I want to find it a whelming experience I'm going to find things that I like about being outside today instead of like the anxiety threat detector in my brain being like people people covid people people <laughs> and like anything else that could make me fearful i'm gonna be like spiderweb robin squirrel leaves flowers <sighs> focus on my dogs because they will be waddling around with me and then i will have treats for them and be teaching them to be all happy and chill walking around. I mean I say teaching, I've been teaching them since they were puppies, they're like geriatric puppies now, like 11 and 10, so they don't really, but I guess teaching is perpetual. Okay. And breathing, it's always good to breathe. Let me remember that. I like that I've folded clothes. I like that I see how much I'm doing and how close I am to responding in exactly the way I'd like, at least externally. Maybe being mindful and enjoying my experience happens as we go. <sighs> okay. I had to go get stuck with a needle, yo. Have a good day and take care. <laughs>